Welcome to Our Girl Relationships. We talk about the problems people face in their day-to-day -day lives. Let's start with the video. I was 18 years old and had always dreamed of attending my top choice college. My grandma from my mom's side had left me enough money to cover all expenses and I was beyond excited to start my journey. I was so grateful to my grandma because I didn't have to worry about tuition and other expenses in school. It would have been very difficult for me if I had nothing from my grandma because my dad wasn't wealthy and we basically lived paycheck to paycheck plus my dad's credit card. My world came crashing down when my dad announced that he wanted me to postpone my dreams for five years so that his stepson could go to college with the money my grandma left me. I was in disbelief. How could my dad even suggest such a thing? My grandma had specifically left me the money so I could pursue my dreams, and now my own father was asking me to give it up? I had no one to run to fight for me. My mom died giving birth to me, and my only connection to my mom was my grandma, who also died last year. When her sickness was getting really bad and the doctors asked her to do everything she needed to do now and to write a will if she didn't have one, she told me about the money for my school. She trusted my dad, so he was aware of it and he was allowed to help me manage it. Now I'm beginning to wonder if that was a mistake. If my dad has access to my money, it means he can do whatever he pleases with it. I later found out that my dad was to help me with it till I turned 18, which was a relief. I refused to let him take my money and he started calling me selfish. I was hurt and angry. How could he use that word for me when he was the one trying to take away my dreams? I felt like I was stuck between a rock and a hard place. On the one hand, I wanted to stand up for myself and what was rightfully mine. On the other hand, I didn't want to cause any rift in the family and hurt my stepbrother in the process. He was very cool, and we had a good time together for the most part. We weren't as close as siblings should be, but we did have a relationship and looked out for each other. Days went by, and the tension between my dad and I only escalated. He constantly brought up the topic of postponing my college, and I would shut down every time. I felt like I was being forced to choose between my dreams and my family, and it was tearing me apart. One night, I snapped. I threw a tantrum and caused a scene, revealing all the times he had put his steps on ahead of me. I let out all my pent-up frustration and made sure he knew just how much he had hurt me. I told him about all the times he chose to get something for him and said I'll get mine the next time, which never happened. He was always asked to pick what he liked first, if we had to pick. He and my stepmom paid more attention to him and sometimes made me feel invisible and unloved. I asked him if he knew how hurtful it was that he missed my activities in school, but despite his hectic schedule, he and my stepmom were always present for my stepbrother. I said everything that he did to me and even some I didn't realize had hurt me. To my surprise, my stepmom soon came to me begging for my forgiveness. She explained that my dad had been struggling with his own guilt and didn't know how to handle the situation. He was torn between giving his stepson a chance at a better future and not wanting to disappoint me. I was shocked and I had never considered that my dad might have his own struggles and fears. I realized that his actions were not solely driven by selfishness but by a desire to do what was best for his family. At that moment, I decided to forgive him and find a solution that allowed his stepson and me to go to college. It was challenging, but we worked together as a family and found a way to make it happen. You wouldn't believe what happened. After cracking my head to see how my stepbrother and I could share the money my grandma left for me, I thought it was all a plot to steal it. I came home earlier than expected one evening, I overheard my dad and stepmom speaking. She told him that he better come up with a way to get her son's complete fees from me because he had to go to the best university in the country once he graduated high school the following year. My dad asked her if she wasn't satisfied that I had agreed to share the money. He also said he knew she had been saving money for her son's fees and she was just being greedy and he was her accomplice by enabling her. 
She countered him, saying he couldn't act like a saint because they both were trying to get my money from me. If not, he wouldn't have falsified the total amount needed for her son's fees. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. These people I had trusted with my life for the past 18 years were plotting how to cheat me out of what was rightfully mine. I called my grandma's lawyer immediately to stop him from doing anything about sharing the money because I had changed my mind. I told him about the conversation I had just heard. It was then I came to find out that my grandma had left me more money than my dad had told me about, and it wasn't just enough for my fees. It was enough to change my whole life. Even before I knew the exact amount, I had planned to give some of it to my dad to start a business, as he asked. He promised that if I ever needed it, he would return it. They were arguing in the kitchen, so I walked in on them, clapping and telling them bravo for planning how to steal my money. I told them they would not get a cent from me as long as I lived and I was moving out the same day. After all, I could afford it. Thanks to my lawyer for telling me how much I actually owned, I asked my dad how he intended to steal the rest of the money he didn't tell me about but he didn't respond. I left for one of my friend's houses that night with most of my most important belongings. I didn't have much because it was not like they cared for me properly. I wasn't their golden child, so everything I owned fit into two boxes, a big box and a small one. The next day, I met up with the lawyer and got all the needed details. He informed me that he would still have had to tell me the total amount and have this meeting with me, so there was no way my dad would have taken my money without me knowing. I was still shocked from the night before, and my dad has been trying to reach me since I left, but I don't plan on speaking to him. The only person I answered from home was my stepbrother. He had no idea what was happening, and his parents were using him to steal from me. I told him everything and he was disappointed in our dad, but he wasn't surprised at his mom. He said he knew his mom was saving up money for me, so he was surprised to see that she wanted me to share my inheritance with him. He said when he tried to question her, she silenced him and asked him never to question her about the matter again. My stepmom knew where I would be, so she came to my friend's house and his mom pleaded with me to speak to her. After making her wait for close to an hour, I came out of my room to see her. She was full of smiles like nothing had happened. She asked me why I left home and that my dad was worried sick. She made no reference to the conversation I had clearly overheard. It was like her deliberately not talking about it was going to make me forget. When she was done, I politely asked her to leave. I told her that I never wanted to see her again and that she should not try to reach me because I was going to block her from getting to me in every way possible. She went on about how she had been a perfect mother to me since my mom died and I was not appreciative of all her sacrifices over the years. That struck a chord in me. I was really trying to not get into any altercations. I had made my decisions and no one was going to change them. But hearing those words spill out of her mouth did something to me. It got me on my nerves. I was almost seeing red, and if not, that I couldn't beat up a woman, I would have given her a good beating. Instead, I took her by the hand and forced her to leave. I told her that at every point she did something for me, she did more than a hundredfold for her own son, and made me feel like she was doing me a favor by letting me live in my father's house. I told her to tell my dad that he should forget about the money I was going to give him. I told her that they can all forget that I even exist because they don't exist to me. NTA, your parents are not worthy of you. You were willing to share with your stepbrother even when you thought it wouldn't be enough. If you let them back into your life again, they will steal from you. NTA, how does a father let his second wife treat his biological child like trash. Shame on anyone who behaves like that. But it's said that it's very common these days. I, 18 female, have a brother, 19 male, who is a cinephile and has a camera in his hand since the ripe age of six. We have always been doing shoots together indoors and outdoors. Recently, he had a project for his film school. 
asked if I could shoot for him and kept insisting, which I didn't care as I've always been the only person who is in his short films or shoots. I told him I'll do this and he wanted it to be 15 minutes long. After we were done with the scenes he wanted outside, our parents were on a work stay, so we had the free house to do shooting and no interruptions inside. It was a scene where it was early morning and I woke up, make a coffee, sit on my balcony and smoked. The weather was beautiful and I understood the ambience he was trying to exude. Until before the scene, he wanted a sense of authenticity, realism and intimacy in the scene. I asked him, what do you mean? And he said, I sleep naked and it feels like a love letter to life. I proceeded to say, you want me to be naked in the short film? That you will show your fellow classmates? He told me that that's a film and it's not weird as I am your brother, but not fully naked, just topless and you can wear underwear. I didn't really care about doing this and maybe it was brain fog in the morning. I didn't care about his friends seeing my boobs as well. It isn't a body part that is revolutionary to the eye anymore. I told him, I'll do it. We proceeded to do it and he got it on first try. Everything was great until I took a nap as it was very early. When I woke up, I understood the gravity of what I had done. I don't know what went through my mind at the time and why I would do something so idiotic. Most of all, just thinking about my brother having a file like that sends a bile up my throat. I go back to him and ask him to give me the file so I can delete it permanently and that I want to react the start where I was naked. He told me that he already submitted it and it would be pointless if I deleted it. I felt embarrassed and sickened. I still feel greatly upset with him and haven't spoken to him. I informed him beforehand that I will not shoot for him again. He got upset and angry, told me that I was his muse, and got him into his desired film school. He told me that I was being unreasonable and turning what I did into something abhorrent when it was art. I am still not even looking at him just because of what I have done. Maybe I'm projecting and diverting this anger that has stemmed from embarrassment onto him, A-I-T-A. NTA, okay, there's definitely more going on here than you seem to realize. Ignoring the obvious creep factor, he called you his muse. You need to go to your parents or a trusted adult immediately. Him refusing to delete the file tells you everything you need to know and there is simply no way that he completed his editing within a few hours. Consider contacting the teacher to ensure he doesn't have the chance to play the video for his class. And be careful. I do not trust your brother, nor should you. NTA for feeling that way. Don't beat yourself up. There's nothing wrong with your body. Nudity isn't bad. But I do understand that, oh my God, what was I thinking feeling. If you don't want him to have it, he should respect your decision. Get it back and delete it. I'd even think the teacher would understand, i.e. my 18-year-old sister did the part, but on reflection, she is uncomfortable with having done a topless scene and she doesn't want it out in the world. Maybe it's just your own feelings, but the description of the situation does make your brother seem a little off. If that's the feeling you get, and if you find he talks you into things you later regret, say no and set your boundaries. My sister, 19 female, and I, 22 female, are not very close. I don't remember a time when she wasn't the sole focus of our parents' attention. She was diagnosed with a lung problem when she was born, and when she was three, she developed a rare form of cancer. This meant our parents focused a lot on curing it, and they expected me to be on hand to entertain her, to keep her mind off cancer, and to make sure she felt loved. There were times my parents scolded me for watching TV while she was sick, because how could I take my focus off of her? She would try to get the attention of everyone after a while. We were left out of a couple of family weddings when we were kids because the bride and groom didn't want her and my parents making her the center of attention on the day. They already did that to my mom's sister. Her wedding day, my sister puked that morning and my parents decided to tell the whole family beforehand because we'd be late. 
Then they showed up at the church and mom went to the front with my sister and announced to everyone that my sister was okay. My aunt was so mad at her for that. She then had my sister go up to them when they were exchanging vows and give them both a kiss. My aunt actually stopped talking to my mom after that shit show. My sister is used to telling everyone she knows she had cancer, that she's got bad lungs still and she's probably going to need more surgeries in future because her liver or kidneys were harmed by her cancer treatments. I admit to resenting the attention she gets. When I was 17, she asked me why I never pay the same kind of attention that our parents do, and I told her because she's not the only kid I know who survived cancer, and because in the real world, people aren't taking their focus off everything to focus on her or any other cancer survivor. I told her it was rude to bring it up when someone else was celebrating or focusing on something. She asked me how it could be rude when people never tell her to stop. I told her people told mom and dad to stop. They just didn't listen, and because she was a kid, they wouldn't say it directly to her. I kind of walked away from my family after I moved out. My sister reached out to me recently, though, and wanted us to catch up. I was open to it, but once she got here, she started telling everyone about her cancer. She asked me to take days off work to spend with her because of cancer and being bored. My girlfriend was over, and she pestered her for hours while I was at work and then called to complain to me that my girlfriend wouldn't entertain her. When I got home that night, I told her if she wants to be the center of attention, that she needs to go to our parents because she won't get that anywhere else. She told me I was mean, and I just resented her, and it wasn't fair. AITA for what I said? NTA. You just told her the truth, and it sounds like you said it in a way that was direct and to the point without being mean. From her point of view, I expect she does think it isn't fair, probably from many perspectives. She is hurt that you don't want her around, and how dare you tell her that because mommy and daddy always told you to do whatever to keep her happy. So, she has expectations from the past. Time to make it very clear to her that her expectations are out of date, and that as grown-ups... You all can choose how to live your life now, and you choose not to be told what to do by your parents. That past behavior isn't a predictor of the future, and when you were beholden to your parents, you did what they asked, and that entertained her, and now you are not, and you don't have to do that, and therefore, you are choosing not to cater to her needs. It isn't about fair and not fair. It is about making a choice, and she can make a choice to rely on herself and not others, to choose to learn how to be an adult or remain as a child dependent on others, just like you did. NTA, your parents have created this situation, but she is an adult now and can take some responsibility. I understand how difficult it must have been for your parents and that they are so thankful she's a survivor, but they have gone to the far extreme of making her the center of everyone's universe and interrupting other people's special occasions. I am sorry you had to grow up in her shadow, and your sister does not seem to want to give that up. I agree that taking some space from her might be the only way to handle it unless she grows up a bit. Some people eventually get it, but many never do, and just marry someone that worships them and then they are even more insufferable. NTA, and here's something that I inferred from your childhood antidotes. I think your parents gave your sister more attention because her being sick gave them more attention. They were so addicted to it that they couldn't recognize when they were being complete AHs to other people. I feel a bit bad for your sister because it will be an incredibly rude awakening for her when she has no one that can tolerate her presence besides her parents and your parents turned her into this monster.